what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel hope all is good wherever you are in this video we're going to watch michael knowles debate a student on the topic of transgenderism let's get into it i'm michael my name is demi um in the recent past you've advocated for the outright eradication of transgenderism from public life with the claim that the supposed right of confused people to pretend to be the opposite sex necessarily infringes on your right to distinguish between men and women i'm starting Sorry, I'm standing here now, a biological male, wearing a dress with a pair of leggings. Do you sincerely believe that I should be subject to punitive justice on the basis of what I'm wearing? And if so, are you willing to turn yourself in for wearing women's panties in your gay college film? <laughs> well, uh, I'll take those questions in order, I guess. Uh, the first one, I, I would encourage you to, to behave as a man, is what I would do. Because you, you are a man, and I don't know... How exactly you came to the point where you think you're a woman or very much would like to be a woman, but you aren't. And I don't think anyone who is uh, affirming your delusion is helping you. I don't think that they're actually an ally of, of yours. I think they're lying to you, and I think it's very disrespectful, and I think it will not lead to your flourishing. I think it will only immiserate you. And so uh, you, you might hate me for telling you the truth, but I think the truth will set you free. And furthermore, your masquerading as a woman does infringe on the legitimate rights of other people, the rights of women to have their own bathrooms. I don't know if you're an athlete. I'm not much of an athlete myself, but the rights of uh, women to have their own sports leagues and the like. That, that is not something that you have a right to do, no matter how sincerely you believe the fantasy that you are a woman. Uh, as to that Yale thesis film, this thing dogs me. <laughs> you know, back in my wayward youth, I was, I was never a, a transvestite or a homosexual or anything, but I was something even more morally suspect. I was a professional actor. And, <laughs> and uh, I played 200 roles, I would estimate, in my acting career. Soldiers, football players, real macho guys. But you play one half gay guy in a Yale thesis film one time. <laughs> so all anybody wants to talk about. And by the way, I don't remember the exact wardrobe from that uh, undergraduate thesis film, but I, I think it was male uh, attire, but it was a bit, it was a bit uh, risque. There's no question about that. Uh, the only further thing I will say about that Yale undergraduate thesis film, that is the most heterosexual thing that has ever been produced at Yale University, okay? <laughs> so in the land of the blind, I guess, the one-eyed man is king. In any case, I think your second question was a little bit more of a joke. Uh, your first question, it, it seems like a sincere question, and my answer to you is, is sincere. Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer any more questions you have, but I'm not going to lie to you, and I, and I think the people who, who are continuing to lie to you about s s so basic an aspect of your nature and the rights that you have in political society are not doing you any favors at all. So... So having yearned for the, uh, for the days when it was illegal to cross-dress in San Francisco, I'm just very curious why you're so comfortable, you know, wearing drag in these films. It's, it's, a, it's a really silly... <laughs> sure, silly, you know, it's a silly I don't know, I was an actor and I wore silly costumes. I don't know what okay. to tell you. If you, have a, if you have a sincere question about the issue or my stance on transgenderism or, uh, you know, any advice that you might be seeking, I'm happy to do it. But if, uh, if you merely want to say that Yale is a bit of a queer school and, you know, I was in a student film, uh, I, I guess I was, and I was basically the most macho guy at that school. What does that tell you about Yale University? When you harp on your right to distinguish between men and women, are you afraid that you're going to be attracted to trans women? I, I'm not. <laughs> you sir? Are you positive? Say, say it again. I didn't hear the second part. Then why is, it that, why is it that you harp on the dis your right to distinguish between men and women? If you can always tell, why is, it, why is it so hard? Well, because it's not even merely that you're putting on a dress. It's that y you and people who identify as transgender are uh, infringing upon rights and spaces that properly belong to women, and you have no right to do that. And so when you ask me, oh, why do you care about this issue? And it's not, by the way, it's not just me. It's like the vast majority of voters who care about this. Uh, the reason is because we live in society and we have political rights and also because we care for the truth. And the very fact that this always happens with the sexual revolutionaries, they always say, you know, if you uh, oppose, if, if you don't agree with the idea that a man can secretly be a woman, then maybe you're a transgender or something. I think the implication is, is, 
is quite clear, which is that you recognize there's something obviously disordered about, about this identity. That's why in, in your attempt to insult people who are pointing out the truth, you're accusing them of that very same thing. But, but that in, in, inclination, that impulse to, to see that as a disorder should be instructive to you. And I, I think it could, it could help you if, if you would allow yourself not to just cast it on someone else, but to look in the mirror. Uh, if you ever want to explore your true self, my Instagram is at Demi Gloom, D-E-M-I-G-L-O-O-M. Thank you so much. I'll have to take a rain check. This is not the first time I've heard somebody call out Michael Knowles based on his old acting. And a lot of people call the guy a hypocrite because uh, he portrayed gay men in some movies when he was in university. I mean, the guy studied to be an actor. To me, like, I know we're all, in, we're all entitled to our own opinion. In my opinion, he didn't do, like, gay adult movies. They were actual regular film. It's no different than somebody portraying a serial killer or portraying a Nazi or a rapist or a wife beater. Just because you portrayed a certain type of character in the film doesn't mean you identify with that character in real life or that's part of your belief system. And these films were kind of when he was younger in university. Michael and I are close in age. And I'll speak for myself here, but when I was in university, I was a lot more like libertarian, I guess closer to being a moderate. Now I'm way more right than I was back then. People change, we evolve as human, you learn stuff. When you're 19, 20 years old, like, what do you really know about life? Now you guys can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments section, but I don't know that Michael Knowles actually has an issue with the gay community. I think it's more the same thing that a lot of us, again, I'll speak for myself, have an issue with the laws, the indoctrination, having a very, very small percent of the population having this much power over the lives of everybody, teaching gender ideology in school, women losing their spaces, women losing their sports, all this stuff I'm completely against, but that community in itself, I don't care if somebody is a gay man or a lesbian woman or a grown man wants to dress up as a woman and portray himself as a woman, present as a woman, it doesn't bother me. It does bother me when I have to change my language to suit your delusion and laws are put in place that I can get fined because I don't use the proper pronoun of all the millions of pronouns that these people are choosing that we should use. Yes, I'm bothered by that. Michael Knowles is 100% right when he said that, you know, their friends, their family that are telling him, oh yeah, you're a woman. You're just feeding into the delusion. Often these people have, uh, say, woman friends, for example, that probably don't even believe that themselves, but they're like, oh yeah, you're a woman. You are not helping these people in the real world at all. Because this idea that trans women are women is really only in the West. Everywhere else, transgender people are happy to be called transgender people. Here in Thailand, I'm around the transgender community. There is more transgender here per capita than anywhere else in the world. I don't know why. There must be something in the water. No idea, but it's been that way for decades. But they don't say that they are women. They call themselves ladyboys. They're men. They realize that they are men that want to present as women and they're fine with that. So it all works out. No problem. It's not in the schools. It's not changing language. Nobody's teaching gender ideology to children. Thailand's a fairly conservative Buddhist country. So that's not taught in the school at all. These people will always correct you. If you think that they're a woman, they'll say, no, no, I'm not a woman. I'm a lady boy. It does take some getting used to when you start living here, but it just all works because nobody's trying to say that they are a real woman. This little video here kind of sums it up. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. Cute. But I'm Everyone. not a lady. You're not a lady? Yes. What are you? I'm lady boy. Um, and you don't believe me? You are not a lady boy, are you? I'm no. lady boy. Really? Yes. You are gorgeous. No! No? I'm Lady Boy. I don't believe you. I don't believe you either. Oh, why? You're Lady. I'm Lady Boy. Now, for anybody wondering, I, I don't live here because I hate the West. My, my girlfriend is Thai. My family has long passed away. Her family is all alive and well. I believe that it takes a village to raise a child, so we live here. Uh, she's from a very good conservative family. They're builders. They have a big real estate company here. So uh, this family-wise, this is a much better arrangement for us. But I'm a very proud Canadian. I love Canada. 
I love America as well. I spent many years there. And my children are half Canadian and they might want to live in Canada one day and I would like it to not be this woke wasteland by the time they get there. When it comes to the pronoun people, the pronoun community as I like to call them, in my opinion, there is no such thing as gender being a social construct. There's just sex. You're either male or you're female. That's based on, you know, your genitalia, your chromosome, all that stuff. There's many differences between men and women. The same reason that, you know, we always say if in a hundred years, once you're dead, if somebody dug you up, they may not know what you identify as, but they will know what you are biologically, a male or a female human. Your self-perception, how you see yourself, I'm fine with that. You want to wake up in the morning and, you know, if you're a grown man and you want to dress like a woman, I don't really have that big of an issue with that. As long as you're not invading women's spaces, I don't think you should be allowed to necessarily teach children. But just because you woke up and you said, well, today I feel like a woman, which you would not know what that is as a biological male because no biological male knows what it's like to feel like a woman the same way no biological female knows what it's like to feel like a man. But you want to go out there and play pretend, go ahead. But that doesn't make it fact that the rest of society has to go ahead and pretend as well. We don't have to take part in your, your charade. You don't get to choose your pronouns. The same way you don't get to choose your prepositions. You don't get to choose your adjectives or anything of the sorts. You see how angry this community gets when they get mis- like a trans man getting misgendered, gets so upset and emotional about it. Men don't act that way. We just accept that society pretty much hates us anyway. And especially when it comes to like little children, right? You know, a little boy will wake up and you know he's got some sisters and he said oh i feel like a girl and you'll see these parents these woke parents this well my little boy's a girl i'm gonna raise him like a girl maybe he's just a little four-year-old boy that has sisters and he sees them play with barbie dolls so he wants to also play with barbie dolls it doesn't mean that you have to raise him as a woman you just can let you can let him play with the little dolls and maybe he's a more effeminate little boy Maybe he grows up to be a gay man. Again, who cares? You don't start chopping off body parts and putting little kids on puberty blockers just because one day they, you know, they said, and these are kids that believe in the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus just because they said, oh, I, I feel like a girl. They might've heard that at school. No, just because a little girl plays with trucks or a little boy plays, it doesn't make them any less a little boy or a little girl. And that's why like Michael Knowles was saying, you know, people say, oh, why do you care about this? At, and people say that to us, like we're the only ones who actually care about it. But I care about women and their spaces and keeping them safe. I don't want my daughter in a change room with a grown man. At any point, ever, truth matters, language matters, and laws matter. And when we see, like in my country of Canada, some of these things becoming a law, that you have to call the person by the right pronoun or you can be charged or fined, that's absolutely ridiculous. Again, you don't get to choose your pronouns. Now, clearly this person here has an Adam's apple. And you can often tell by the Adam's apple or, or the bigger hands, right? But this is a community that wants to say, oh, a trans man is the same as a biological man or a biological woman is the same as a trans woman. But they can't even define what a man or a woman is. And I go back to what Michael Knowles was saying. We're not doing them any favors by doing that. You don't fix a problem with the mind by altering the body and you know their friends, their family, because gender dysmorphia, if someone actually has it, it's a mental issue. They need a psychiatrist. They don't need to be chopping off body parts. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing to the channel. Help it grow. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out, everybody.